Hello everyone, today I am going to talk to you about crystallographic point groups and how to visualize them with Mathematica. Point groups are important in crystallography as they enable us to classify um, crist um, symmetries of crystals. So what are point groups? Point groups are sets of symmetries which are invariant around the center point, meaning a point will not change um, if it's in the, at the center and it has all of these symmetries applied. Um, so the three elements of point groups are mirror planes, rotation axis, and roto inversion axis. And mirror planes, as you can imagine, are just taking an, uh, a point and then the image, the mirror image of this point will be the symmetry. Uh, mirror planes can be in three dimension, meaning that they can be perpendicular to x, perpendicular to y, and perpendicular to the z axis. Rotation axes are also uh, found in the three dimensions, but they are rotations around this axis. So, for example, a two-fold rotation would be taking a point and making a rotation of half a circle around a certain axis, and this would be the symmetry. Uh, a three-fold rotation axis would be three atoms which are each rotated from uh, by one-third of a circle. So. Um, Rotor inversion axes are a bit more complicated to visualize. They are basically a um, rotation followed by what we call an inversion. Um, so, for example, if we take a fourfold roto inversion axis, we have to take our point, rotate it by one fourth of a circle, and then invert this point through the origin. So, basically, inverting would be taking a point which has the coordinates one on one and transforming it into minus one, minus one, minus one. When we, com when we uh, mix all these elements, uh, we get the 32 point groups which are in crystallography, as you can see in their 2D notation like this. So let's talk a bit about the notation. Um, it, it is fairly simple. We take an M if we have a mirror plane, two M's if we have a two mirror planes, etc. If this mirror plane is perpendicular to an, uh, an already existing rotation axis, then we, we note it slash m. Um, a rotation axis is basically just a number um, which tells us the number of rotations. So three-fold rotation axis would be um, three, uh, you know, three rotation around a, a certain axis. Um, x bar is also uh, denoted for a roto inversion axis. So if we look at example, examples, a couple of examples. Um, we can see the first point group, which is named 1, um, which basically has no symmetry. So we have a point and nothing happens with it. Um, then we have the two-fold uh, rotation axis. So we take this, uh, this point, rotate it by half a circle, and we get this point. Same for the three-fold rotation axis, 1, 2, and 3. And we're back to the original position. And then we have here the four-fold rotation axis, and here the six-fold rotation axis. If we take something which has mirror planes, so this is M, M, M. So for example, we can take uh, the cross, uh, which is, the cross symbolizes an atom which is above the plane, and a circle, an atom which is below the plane. So if we take this point, and then say that there is a mirror plane here, then we have, of course, to uh, find a mirror image which is here. Then if we say there's a um, mirror plane on this direction, then we have to take these two atoms and put them here, and then we also have a third mirror plane, which would be perpendicular to the x-axis, so the x-axis in these images goes out of the screen, and that's how we end up with four atoms on the top and four atoms below. Um, then we can combine these with um, a rotation axis, so for example this is a 2 slash m, so basically we have a two-fold rotation, and then we have a mirror plane, which is uh, perpendicular to the x-axis. So we get two atoms above and two atoms below. Um, you can also play around with the rest and see if, they, if it works, but we get it gets more and more complicated up to this one, which is m bar 3m, which is the, the most symmetric of these point groups. So how do we use point groups? Um, so basically, if we combine the 32 point groups with the translational symmetries of the 14 blah blah lattices and glide planes and screw, pla screw axes, which are, which are found in, um, in 3D. If we start to combine point groups, then we end up with a 230 space group to which all crystals belong. 
Um, so uh, how, how do we combine point groups and breath lattices? So here is a list of the breath lattices. They're basically just taking a point and translating it around a lattice, a cubic lattice, a trigonal lattice, hexagonal, everything. The blue point will be the center of the point group, and then we just translate this mass of atoms which um, are the symmetry on the point group and then translate it around the lattice. So let's look at the code and see how we visualize them. So this is the manipulant which has the, the function embedded inside. So we start with one atom, which is the point group one. If we decide to, to make a mirror plane, for example, perpendicular to x, then we end up with this. This is uh, just one mirror plane, which has the same name one, then name m. So then we can have three mirror planes, which would give us eight atoms. And, and this, this is basically what the code does, uh, just taking all, the, all what we give it. So for example, we can take 222, two, two, uh, which you can find is this one here. Uh, 222 gives us this. So this is the 222 rotation axis uh, symmetry, the 222 point group. Um, here in the function, we also have uh, the number of atoms, which is four, and we have the name of the point group, uh, which is a bit experimental because it's not easy to generate a name out of uh, all, the, all the data which has. Um, this code can generate, for example, this, uh, which is a point group which does not exist, 666. Um, it's just, it, it, this is the, the first version of the code which might be improved, of course. We can also take rotary version axis here. So if we try to understand what, what's happening with this one, um, is we have an atom, then we trans, so we said uh, a one fold rotation, a rotary version axis would be a one fold rotation. So basically we end up at the same point and then we invert it through the origin and then we get this um, opposite uh, atom, as you can see. If we get it, maybe clearer to see if we have a three rotor inversion axis. So you, you can clearly see the, the threefold um, rotation. So we have three atoms on one side and three atoms on the other side. So three atoms above and three atoms below. And then, um, and then we invert them each time. So this is the code, and now let's look at how it works. So it is quite easy. Um, what the code does is taking the inputs and then calculating all the mat matrices of all the transformations. So the first line here would be taking the matrix of uh, the mirror planes, so with the function of reflection transform from Mathematica. This line takes the rotation axis with the rotation transform function. Then these lines calculate the, all the rotation, uh, all the uh, transformation matrices from each um, rotor inversion axis. It, as you can see, it's a bit more complicated to come up with. And then taking all of these matrices, which are found in uh, the lines of matrices mirror, matrices rot, and matrices inv for rotor inversion, we do the outer product of all of these matrices. So we get every possible combination of every um, possible symmetry, so we can have all the, the symmetry positions. And then we are applying that to uh, our initial position, and we get all the symmetry positions. Um, then uh, we delete duplicates of symmetry position, we make sphere out of it, and then we, uh, we display everything in a graphics 3D. This bit here is to generate uh, the name of the point group, as I said, experimental. And this bit here is to calculate the, um, the number of atoms we have. So this is basically the, the function, which is not that complicated, as, as I said. And here is the result, as we can have, as we can see. We can start combining everything and having a two, two bar m, two bar m, two bar m, and just play with it. This is, uh, this is why this code, this code is great, because we can actually visualize um, point groups in 3D instead of seeing them as these uh, 2D representations. So I hope you had a fun time and um, thank you for your attention.